What's going on, creepers and geekers? Chris, the Atari creep here. And this is uh, part two to Don't Be Afraid of Ugly Things. If you recall, some time ago, I posted a video called Don't Be Afraid of Ugly Things regarding a PlayStation, the original one. And when I picked it up, it looked like crap. There were stickers on it. There was some kind of weird gooky yuckiness on it. Um, and I did my little tests in store uh, to see if it was worth the gamble. Plus, if you remember the price, it was well worth the gamble. It was originally seven something dollars plus fifty percent off, and then a the guy gave me uh, another discount because he's, he, you know, he's a good dude and he likes me. And I ended up paying like three ninety nine for the damn thing, and I brought it home, cleaned it up, and it worked perfectly. And I did pass that one on to somebody. Um, fortunately and fortunately, uh, part two here is going to explore the other side of "Don't Be Afraid of Ugly Things," and I hope. This is as informative, if not more so, than the original one. Um, I was in Goodwill yesterday, and this could be, good, you know, anywhere. Your flea markets, your thrift stores, Goodwills, uh, yard sales, whatever. And I came across this Super Nintendo. Um, around here, especially in the sun, it's, it's, it's hard to find one that hasn't faded all the way to brown. Uh, this one's by no means perfect, perfect, but it's in great shape. And the price tag, if you saw the picture before, it said $7.99. Now, this week wasn't any 50% off week or anything like that. But it's a Super Nintendo for $7.99. How can you pass up on that? Um, so I did what little tests I could inside the store. I grabbed the power plug that was actually attached to it. And that's rare, too. Plugged it in, and I got the light to light up. And I figured, you know what? I'm pretty safe there. All, the, all these little deals, they all work fine. And... Uh, the cartridge port was in good shape and nothing was smashed back here and doesn't look like it's been dropped. Um, it's in really great shape. So $7.99, these usually go anywhere from $50 to $60 bucks locally here if I go retail. Um, it was well worth the uh, risk. So I brought her home and I turned it on, I plugged it in. Of course I cleaned it first because that's, that's therapy to me. I love that. I love bringing shit home, cleaning up while watching a movie and then playing them obviously. Um, but I plugged it in, it lit up again, I was like, yay, um, but unfortunately I got what they call the dreaded black screen on that TV. So I did a few little things, I got into the cartridge port a little bit and, and cleaned it up a little with, uh, you know, a little piece of cardboard and some, you know, whatever inside there and blew it out and put a cartridge in there and black screen. Um... So I went on a local board and said, all right, guys, here's my problem. I know you all oogled because they posted it on the way home. Uh, that's why that picture was taken in my car. And uh, one guy on there, he's very, 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 very knowledgeable about this electronic stuff, especially when it comes to gaming. Um, he does a lot of hacks. He, uh, he's just amazing with this stuff. And he said that dreaded black screen is very common, especially here in Arizona. There's a thing inside of it called the PPU. I don't know what that is just yet, but apparently when heat or it's exposed to a great deal of heat, they fail, and that's that. And here in Arizona, more than likely, this thing's been sitting in a garage, which in the summertime is an oven, and over time the PPU failed or what have you. So, $7.99 I spent on a Super Nintendo, brought it home, and it doesn't work. Unfortunately, that's the other side of what we do. Uh, but please don't let that discourage you. I mean, that was still a great deal. It was a great price. I could use this for parts. Um, and again, on the positive side, this case is gorgeous. It's in really good shape. So what I plan to do is, and honestly, I don't own a Super Nintendo aside from this thing. I use an Emmy, uh, one of these little uh, Retron dealies. Um, and this will be my very first actual Super Nintendo purchase. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. But... Um, now what I can do is I can look around for one that looks like ass. Uh, cracks in the uh, case, complete brown or yellowing, um, buttons that are a little off. But as long as I can find out whether it works or not, i got a perfect case to put the board that's inside of here in here. So all is not lost. So guys, what I'm saying is don't get discouraged when you go out there and... You think you're getting a great deal and you bring it home and unfortunately it doesn't work. This is probably the first time I've had something like this happen aside from like a cartridge or controllers. Uh, me and my lady discussed it and I was pretty bummed out. 
And she's like, think about it, Chris. You've been lucky with everything. You've gotten free stuff that's worked perfectly. And stuff that's dirt cheap that's worked perfectly. That, that PlayStation's a great example. Uh, the NES I had, I got at a Goodwill dirt cheap. And it worked perfectly. I didn't have to play with the 72-pin uh, connector. So don't let shit like this discourage you. And I guess that's all I really wanted to say, because there are still positives. i got a gorgeous case here to put an ugly SNES guts into. So guys, with that, I'm just going to let you go now. Um, I'm working on the uh, next video, and it's going to be about the Atari cartridges that are up here above my head. And um, I hope you're all having a great weekend. And uh, until I see you in my next video, guys, bye bye